Well, if you've been listening to this show over the past year, you have heard me on a few occasions lament the tipping epidemic in our culture, the tipping scourge, the out-of-control proliferation of tipping. Everybody wants a tip now everywhere you go, no matter how mediocre their performance. You've heard me talk about this problem enough that you certainly don't need to hear me talk about it again right now. Uh, I have made my case. Everyone understands that when it comes to tipping, I am at the tipping point. But I need to broach the subject one more time for what I promise will be the last time, at least for this month, for two reasons. First, so that I could make that tipping point joke. That objective is complete. Second, because of this story, which I find so annoying that I am compelled by forces, forces of nature outside of my control, to talk about it in the daily cancellation. The story is from CNN. Quote, uh, thinking of skipping on a DoorDash tip? Do so at your own risk, warns a message being tested by the food delivery provider. If you try to place an order through the DoorDash app without leaving a tip, you may get this pop-up. Orders with no tip might take longer to get delivered. Are you sure you want to continue? The note goes on. Dashers can pick and choose which orders they want to do. Uh, orders that take longer to be accepted by dashers tend to result in slow delivery. In other words, tip your drivers or be prepared to wait a long time for a cold meal. Customers are then given the option to add a tip or continue without one. So this is how bad the tipping plague has gotten. Every time I think it couldn't get worse, it gets worse. Now companies are using blackmail to bully you into tipping. And they're demanding the tip before the service is rendered. And we'll get back to that in a second. NBC had a report on this uh, new system from DoorDash, which is which it's rolling out as a trial balloon to see just how much customers hate it. And customers will hate it, and they'll do it anyway. NBC spoke to a DoorDash driver who uh, made his case for why we should tip him. Here's what he said. It hurts your feelings. It hurts your feelings more when they tip you a penny. The food delivery service added this pop-up disclaimer as part of a pilot program. It's five miles. And maybe there's a dollar tip, maybe. But it's just like, I don't know. Are you going to take that order? No, I'm not going to take that. Definitely not going to take that. <laughs> it hurts his feelings when you don't tip. So make sure you tip or the man on the bicycle might start crying which is maybe the best case against tipping that I could possibly make. I'd, I'd want to give that guy an anti-tip if that's possible. I want him, like, I, I, I want him to pay me money. That's, how, that's, that, that's what should happen there. I don't know if it's, I wish there was a negative tip option for somebody like that. By the way, business is booming for DoorDash. They, uh, they had 540 million orders last quarter, which is a 24% jump uh, year over year, according to CNN. Revenue is up 27%. And yet DoorDash, like so many other multi-billion dollar companies, expect us to pay their employees for them. Something that you would think we're already doing by paying for the service in the first place. But no, DoorDash demands that we pay for the service and then also pay extra for the worker who is performing the service. This is why it ultimately costs you $87 to have a hamburger and fries delivered to your house from a restaurant three miles away. Because you're paying for the food, and you're paying for the service, and you're paying for the worker rendering the service. And these are all three separate charges, and then you're also paying the government. So just to get the hamburger, you got to pay for the, You're paying the restaurant, you're paying the company, you're paying the, the worker, you're paying the government. It starts to feel excessive to a lot of people, which is why they may choose not to tip. But now DoorDash is actively threatening you with deliberately poor service if you attempt to order a pizza without having to mortgage your house to pay for it. This is how insane this situation has become. And DoorDash and, and Uber Eats, they're, they're perfect little microcosms of the tipping problem as a whole. The incentive structure has been thrown wildly out of balance. Now, it used to be that you would tip in certain limited circumstances as a reward for exemplary service. Now, you're not only expected to tip everyone in every service job, but you're also expected to tip before the service has been performed. So, you know, you may tip your DoorDash driver 20%, only to get your order 30 minutes past expected delivery time anyway, and your food is cold, and like someone took a, a bite out of your sandwich, already, and you already tipped them. Cozy Earth sheets are the softest, most luxurious sheets I've ever owned. My wife and I have their white bamboo sheets on our bed. These bamboo sheets are temperature regulating, help us uh, both sleep better every night. If you're a hot sleeper and your spouse is a cold sleeper, you'll need these sheets, especially on these cold winter nights. Cozy Earth sheets offer an array of sizes and 11 colors to match your unique style and preferences. Their sheets are made to withstand the test of time. My Cozy Earth sheets uh, get softer and softer with every wash. 
But don't just take my word for it. They have over 5,000 happy customer reviews on their site. What are you waiting for? Cozy Earth offers a 100-night guarantee, so there's no harm in trying them out. Make every night a cozy one with Cozy Earth. Right now, you'll save 40% off your next purchase with promo code Walsh40 at CozyEarth.com. That's promo code Walsh40 at CozyEarth.com. The tip has, has become an act of coerced generosity, which it never was before, and it was never meant to be. The same thing applies even to coffee shops and other places that now ask for tips. The first problem is that they're asking for a tip in the first place. The second is that most of the time they're asking for the tip before they have completed the service that they're supposed to perform. They haven't even given you the coffee yet. And they're asking, so it's not even, it's like, it's bad enough to ask for a tip when all they're doing is just handing you a coffee. They're asking for the tip before they even do that. So that they could figure out a way to screw that up and you've already tipped them for it. Just the other day, I went to a coffee shop, uh, ordered a, a regular coffee for myself, and then a fancy specialty coffee for my wife. And, you know, she always wants a fancy coffee. I always tell her, look, your fancy coffee is going to take longer. Okay, I just get you a regular coffee. It's all the same anyway. It's just caffeine. She wanted the fancy coffee. Fine. The employee flips over the, the dreaded iPad with the tip amounts, and uh, there was no friendly request for a tip. No friendliness at all, actually. She barely said a word through the whole transaction. She didn't say anything. Like, I just totally, and then just, and then just flipped it over. And walked away. Like, really? And then, uh, and then ex- you know, expecting me to reward her for doing as close to nothing as she possibly could. Although, to be honest, I think I'd prefer that they just silently flip the screen over than do the other thing that they usually do, which is, you know, they flip it over and they say, uh, it's going to ask you a couple questions. No, no, it's not going to ask me a couple questions. It's going to ask me one question, and you and I both know what that question is. Stop trying to disguise your panhandling like it's some kind of survey you're conducting. Imagine if a homeless guy with a sign begging for money walked up to you, shoved the sign in your face, and said the same thing. But it's going to ask you a couple questions. Anyway, I, wa- I wanted to go hit the no tip option, as I always do these days. But because I'm dumb and clumsy, I accidentally hit the wrong button, and I tipped a dollar, tragically. And um, this, again, was before the service had been completed. I did not have the coffee in hand at this point. And 20 minutes later, after having already tipped accidentally, but still, I'm still standing there waiting for my wife's fancy coffee, which was not nearly so fancy that it had to take 20 minutes to make. I had tipped ahead of time for a service that ended up being extremely poor. This is how it goes now. But when you think about it, the epidemic of tipping is, is it's not happening in a vacuum. It didn't come out of nowhere. It's just the latest iteration of forced charity in our culture. This is essentially the welfare state now making its way into the service industry. You know, we have lived in a culture of entitlement for a long time. It's no surprise that it's manifesting itself in this way now. And the biggest problem with the forced or coerced charity, whether it's a government entitlement program or a pop-up on DoorDash threatening you with cold food if you don't tip your driver ahead of time, or a sullen, scowling cashier flipping an iPad over, expecting a tip for doing literally nothing. In all of these cases, the coercion tactics may prove profitable for those wielding them, but they don't do what willful, voluntary charity and generosity does. When somebody chooses of their own free will to be generous, free of any emotional blackmail or coercive tactics or force, Their charitable act naturally breeds gratitude and connection and appreciation. When somebody is generous to you because they chose to be generous, it lifts both both you and them up in ways that, that go beyond the financial. But that's not how it works when somebody is forced or manipulated or pressured into charity. In that case, it makes the giver understandably bitter and resentful while the receiver only becomes more entitled and spoiled. Everybody is worse off. The giver most of all, because he's the one losing money, but both parties, giver and receiver, both walk away from the exchange with a negative attitude about it. That's why, as I have often remarked, we're seeing tipping go up while quality of service goes down. The more that service workers are tipped, the more lazy and entitled they seem to become and the more annoyed and broke their customers become. Everybody loses in the end, even if the service worker makes a few bucks out of the deal. Companies like DoorDash are driving this problem maybe more than anybody else, and that is ultimately why DoorDash is today canceled. 
If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Wall Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.